Well, as Sam Altman's exit from OpenAI causes a shakeup in Silicon Valley, many are speculating on what this means for the broader industry and one key concern in particular, that safety. The release of OpenAI's latest model of ChatGPT saw major players in the tech space call for a pause in development of generative AI overall, raising concerns over its existential risks. Joining us now is Russ Newman, professor of media and technology at NYU. Thank you so much for being here. Amidst all this kerfuffle was some reporting that there was a, some concern that the commercialization of AI at OpenAI was proceeding too quickly, maybe was raising some safety concerns. What do you think is going on here, Russ? Do you think the industry is being careful enough? Well, I think we can speculate there were four issues that could have been uh, intertwined in the boardroom uh, dramatics out on 18th Street in San Francisco. The first is the issue of safety and whether uh, pausing would make any sense. But my, my view is that if you sort of stop or slow down, uh, that's not going to make any difference. You've got to put more energy into finding uh, AI systems that can uh, do the monitoring because humans can't keep up with these uh, large scale systems. The second thing is open AI was supposed to be open source and it's not clear whether it makes any sense to have an open source program when you have a hundred, I'm sorry, a million points, 1.7 trillion different parameters. If you can open that up, nobody can make sense of that. So uh, if it's the concept of open source in this day and age uh, makes a lot less sense. And the, the third thing is uh, the notion of commercialization of uh, for-profit, not-for-profit. It seems to me, uh, we wouldn't have seen what's going on if it, there wasn't the investment from Microsoft to make it possible. Uh, the fourth possible issue that would generate the boardroom drama is simply the personalities. So my take on it is all four of those potential issues are sort of non-issues because uh, if you generate a company based on selling your access to your foundational AI model and it's not safe, that's not economic either. So there's a lot of incentive to keep things safe economically. And Russ, what, what is the biggest near-term risk when it comes to AI that, that you see? Um, there was a study at Stanford where they took uh, something like 400 to $500. And with that amount could tune a system and reschedule it, uh, reorganize the system. So the preventions that were built into the AI system were no longer uh, at play. So it, it's just going to be a, a wild west. We got to get used to this. If there are malicious players out there, it's very difficult to say, well, my foundational model will prevent that because the tuning of these systems is going to reopen up all those questions all over again. Does what has happened over the past few days change this equation at all? Uh, it changes it for the personalities involved in, in open AI, but there are, I'm guessing it's going to be about a dozen foundational models uh, paid for in large part by the large tech players, and that all of the action is going to be on finding fine-tuned specialized versions of those foundation models. Uh, and that's good news. Uh, that means there's going to be many dozens of players uh, working with these models. Uh, GPT-4 cost $100 million and took uh, 100 days and uh, 25,000 uh, NVIDIA chips to, to build it. Uh, that means that Setting up a foundation model is going to take a big investment. Uh, all the action is going to be on fine tuning those models for specialized purposes. And, and Russ, the fact that it is such big players and it is so expensive to build these models, does that imply that they will be more careful if for no other reason than fear of liability as they move forward? Yeah, I think that's a, I think the whole concept that if somebody was complaining, you guys are for profit, you're talking, you're talking to Microsoft too soon. Uh, the notion that a non, not for profit would have different incentives, I think is, uh, is naive. And Russ, what, what in your opinion is, is the proper role of regulators when it comes to this technology? And, and do you trust Russ and have confidence <laughs> in American lawmakers? I see you're laughing already. Maybe you know where I'm going, but do you, do you have <laughs> trust and confidence, Russ, in American lawmakers and, and regulators, do they have the insight, the experience, frankly, the tech chops to know how to regulate this technology smartly, responsibly, effectively? AI is basically applied mathematics. You can't regulate mathematics. The one liner I've been using is trying to regulate AI is like trying to nail jello to the wall. Uh, <laughs> I was 
surprised by Altman's uh, appeal to say, let's have some regulatory review of these issues. Uh, the, um, the president's executive order was very careful not to recommend a new regulatory agency. And I hope that becomes the posture of all the, uh, all the future administrations, because I think it's a, it's a sorry, <laughs> it's going to be an unsuccessful, even if well-intended effort on the part of the federal government to regulate. And so, you know, I guess from a developmental perspective, what do we make? I mean, does it matter if Altman stays at OpenAI? Does it matter if he goes to Microsoft in terms of just where generational AI goes going forward? Well, with the news that 700 of 770 uh, employees want some change, my guess is the drama will be over fairly quickly and we'll see a reorganize open AI as a, as a major player. Uh, nobody quite understood how with uh, Microsoft's very substantial investment in open AI, they weren't more involved in the future of that enterprise. Uh, my guess is we'll see some kind of a compromise, whether uh, Sam and Greg are working for Microsoft. My guess is if they don't get cooperating, they'll build, they'll take the building across this 18th street from and look at each other through the windows. <laughs> and uh, we'll see a, a lot of progress uh, on both sides of 18th street. Um, Russ, finally, I mentioned that letter that a lot of people signed that raising concerns about the sort of existential threat potentially that AI can pose. You know, Elon Musk has brought that up. Jeffrey Hinton has brought that up. Sam Altman, I think, signed on to that very letter. Um, I know you didn't sign that letter. Are you concerned that, you know, there's existential threat to humanity from the development of AI? Uh, I am. I think we need to take it seriously. These are very bright young men and women. And when they said, let's stop for six months, they knew we wouldn't stop. They knew it wasn't possible. They just find, wanted to find a way to draw our attention. And I think that attention is well spent. What we got to do is work harder, work faster on, on keeping these things un under control. And I think the, the more investment, the better. Russ Newman, great to get your perspective on this. Thanks so much for taking some time to spend with us. Thank you.